How rash to assert that humans shape their own destiny. All we can do is determine our inner responses. You cannot know another's inner life from their circumstances. To know that, you must know their dreams, their relationships, their moods, their disappointments, their sicknesses, and their death. A large group of us were crowded into the Gestapo hall, and at that moment, the circumstances of all our lives were the same. All of us occupied the same space. The men behind the desk, no less than those about to be questioned. What distinguished each of us was only our inner attitude. We human beings cause monstrous conditions, but precisely because we cause them, we soon learn to adapt ourselves to them. Only if we become such that we can no longer adapt ourselves, only if, deep inside, we rebel against every kind of evil, will we be able to put a stop to it? While everything within us does not yet scream out in protest, so long we will find ways of adapting ourselves, and the horrors will continue. I really see no other solution than to turn inwards and to root out all the rottenness there. I no longer believe that we can change anything in the world until we first change ourselves. And that seems to me the only lesson to be learned. Each of us must turn inward and destroy in ourself all that we think we ought to destroy in others. To live fully, outwardly and inwardly. Not to ignore the external reality for the sake of the inner life or the reverse, that's quite a task. Nazi barbarism gives rise to an identical barbarism in us that would proceed with the same methods if we were able to act today as we would like. We must internally reject this incivility. We cannot cultivate that hatred in ourselves, because otherwise the world will not come out of the mud by a single step. Ultimately, we just have one moral duty, to reclaim large areas of peace in ourselves. More and more peace. And to reflect it towards others. And the more peace there is in us, the more peace there will also be in our troubled world.
suffering has always been with us. Does it really matter in what form it comes? All that matters is how we bear it and how we fit it into our lives. I know about the great human suffering that is accumulating. I know about persecution and oppression. I know all this, and I continue to face every bit of reality that is imposed on me. And in an unexpected moment, left to my own devices, I suddenly find myself leaning against life's spare chest, and her arms are so soft and enfold me, and I can't even describe the beating of her heart. As faithful as if ever before, And I thought, how strange this is. It's war. There are concentration camps. Little cruelties pile up on top of little cruelties. Life, with all its secrets, was close to me as if I could touch it. And there I felt immensely safe and protected. If an SS man were to kick me to death, I would still look up at his face and ask myself with terrified amazement, and human interest. My God, brother, what terrible thing has happened to you in your life that you resort to such things? I don't think I have nerves of steel. Far from it. But I can certainly stand up to things. I'm not afraid to look suffering straight in the eyes. By coming to terms with life, I mean, the reality of death has become a definite part of my life. My life has, so to speak, been extended by death by my looking death in the eye and accepting it. By accepting destruction as part of life. And no longer wasting my energies on fear of death. Or the refusal to acknowledge its inevitability. It sounds paradoxical. By excluding death from our life, we cannot live a full life. And by admitting death into our life, we enlarge and enrich it. Ought we not, from time to time, Open ourselves up to cosmic sadness. Give your sorrow all the space and shelter in yourself that is its due. For if everyone bears their grief honestly and courageously, the sorrow that now fills the world 
will abate. But if you do not clear a decent shelter for your sorrow, and instead reserve most of the space inside you for hatred and thoughts of revenge, from which new sorrows will be born for others, then sorrow will never cease in this world and will multiply. I believe that I know and share the many sorrows and sad circumstances that a human being can experience. But I do not cling to them. I do not prolong such moments of agony. They pass through me like life itself, as a broad, eternal stream. They become part of that stream and life continues. And as a result, all my strength is preserved. As life becomes harder and more threatening, it also becomes richer, because the fewer expectations we have, the more good things of life become unexpected gifts that we accept with gratitude. A desire to kneel down sometimes pulses through my body, or rather, it is as if my body has been meant and made for the act of kneeling. Sometimes in moments of deep gratitude, kneeling down becomes an overwhelming urge. Head deeply bowed. Hands before my face. My red and yellow roses have opened completely. While I sat there in that hell, they just quietly stood there blooming. Many say, how can you still think of flowers? They are as real as all the misery. There is room for many things in one life. And I have so much space, my God. Sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest we take between two deep breaths. or the turning inwards in prayer for five short minutes. Become simple and live simply, not only within yourself, but also in your everyday dealings. Don't make ripples all around you. Don't try to be interesting. Keep your distance. Be honest. Fight the desire to be thought fascinating by the outside world. We have to become as simple and as wordless 
as the growing corn or the falling rain. We must just be. Listen to what is going on inside you. Thinking gets you nowhere. It may be a fine and noble aid in academic studies, but you can't think your way out of emotional difficulties. That takes something altogether different. You have to make yourself passive then and just listen. Re establish contact with a slice of eternity. Before, I always lived in anticipation that it was all a preparation for something else something greater, more genuine. But that feeling has dropped away from me completely. I live here and now, this minute, this day, to the full. And the life is worth living. I don't want to be anything special. I only want to be true to that in me which seeks to fulfill its promise. That I should die next week. I would still be able to sit at my desk all week and study with perfect equanimity. For I know now that life and death make a meaningful whole. Every day I shall put my papers in order, and every day I shall say farewell. And the real farewell, when it comes, will only be a small outward confirmation of what has been accomplished within me from day to day. And now that I don't want to own anything anymore and am free, now I suddenly own everything. Now my inner riches are immeasurable. Sometimes my day is crammed full of people and talk, and yet I have the feeling of living in utter peace and quiet. And the tree outside my window in the evenings is a greater experience than all those people put together. I have the feeling of something secret deep inside me that no one knows about. When you have an interior life, it certainly doesn't matter what side of the prison fence you're on. I've already died a thousand times in a thousand concentration camps. I know everything. 
There is no new information to trouble me. One way or another, I already know everything. And yet, I find this life beautiful and rich in meaning at every moment. Living and dying, sorrow and joy, the blisters on my feet and the jasmine behind the house, the persecution, the unspeakable horrors. It is all as one in me. And I accept it all as one mighty whole and begin to grasp it better if only for myself without being able to explain to anyone else how it all hangs together. I wish I could live for a long time so that one day I may know how to explain it. And if I am not granted that wish, well, then somebody else will perhaps do it. Carry on from where my life has been cut short. And that is why I must try to live a good and faithful life to my last breath so that those who come after me do not have to start all over again, need not face the same difficulties. Isn't that doing something for future generations? Everywhere things are both very good and very bad at the same time. The two are in balance, everywhere and always. I never have the feeling that I have got to make the best of things. Everything is fine, just as it is. Every situation, however miserable, is complete in itself and contains the good as well as the bad. Despite everything, life is full of beauty and meaning. I hate nobody. I am not embittered. And once the love of humankind has germinated in you, it will grow without measure. Never give up. Never escape. Take everything in and perhaps suffer. That's not too awful either. But never, never give up. There are moments when I feel like a little bird in a big protective hand. Yesterday my heart was a trapped bird. Now the bird is free again and flies unhindered over everything.
Today the sun shines. And now I'll pack my bread and be on my way. <laughs>